Okay, I want to talk a little bit more about hybrid orbitals today. So if you haven't had a chance to watch my video on hybridizing atomic orbitals, I would recommend starting there because I'm already assuming that you kind of understand the model. And now I'm really going to focus on visualizing and what it looks like when these orbitals start overlapping with each other, how do they form different geometries, all that good stuff. So um, that's the focus of this video. If you want kind of the more intro, the video is called hybridizing atomic orbitals. So let's talk a little bit about geometry and kind of going from a molecular formula or chemical formula to a Lewis dot structure to a Vesper structure. And then what does that tell us about the hybrid orbitals that are within it? So let's take ammonia, for example. So if I'm going to do the Lewis dot structure for ammonia, I have five valence electrons from my nitrogen, one each from my hydrogens. So when I put together my Lewis dot structure, with the skeleton. I use up six just in connecting the hydrogens to the nitrogens, nitrogen, and then I have one lone pair. And that's it. So the Lewis dot structure gives me that. It has four things around a central atom. Three are atoms, one are lone pair. So that gives me tetrahedral geometry. I'm going to draw it like a tetrahedron with my lone pair and my hydrogen here in the same plane. One of my hydrogens coming out at you the other one going back into the space. And so the Vesper geometry or the electron pair geometry is tetrahedral, four things around a central atom. It gives me that, you know, 109.5 degree expected angles. But because only three of them are atoms, then I actually have a trigonal pyramid here. So this trigonal pyramid um, actually has angles of 107 degrees because that lone pair takes up more space, yada, yada, yada. Now, when we're thinking about hybrid orbitals, now recall that a hybrid orbital is S and P orbitals. So if I have four things around a central atom, so four electron pairs, then that means that I have four hybrid orbitals because it means that it's coming from tetrahedral geometry. So even though the name of the shape is trigonal pyramid, it's still tetrahedral Vesper geometry, and that's really what we're getting our hybrid orbitals from. So if I have four hybrid orbitals, that's four sp3 orbitals that I'm working with. And for nitrogen, it's in the second period, so we'd be thinking about them here, two, three, four, that are roughly at the same energy. It's in the second period, so we have these two sp3. And then if we're thinking about our um, electrons, there's five valence electrons for nitrogen, because again, we're focusing on our central atom. So that then predicts that I have one pair, one lone pair of electrons, and I have three places where I can share them. So for visualizing this, because the tricky thing about orbitals and geometries and thinking about this thing in 3D is just really trying to figure out what the heck is going on. How does this work? So if I have my nitrogen here and I have a hybrid, here's my lone pair. So small lobe, big lobe, that's an sp3 hybrid orbital. And I'd have, you know, a pair of electrons in here. Now I'd have small lobe kind of overlapping, big lobe here. Here's my sp3, sp3, small lobe, this one's coming out at you. This one is going back into the space. Try not to be bowled over by my art here. Now I think it looks like a very happy octopus. So that's, that's good. Perfect. Just as I intended. So, so far, all I've done is the hybrid orbitals on my nitrogen. So my nitrogen is represented here. And now if I bring in the hydrogens, remember that a hydrogen just has a 1s orbital. So it just has this kind of spherical orbital that each one is going to be contributing to the bond. And valence bond theory says that overlapping orbitals give us a covalent bond. So if I bring that in to my hybrid, then I have one here and one here and one here. And that kind of Venn diagram middle bit, that overlap, is my covalent bond. Right, so I have a covalent bond here that is represented by this one that's going back into the page. This one is this one. This one's coming out at you, coming out at you. This one's in line with the page in the same plane as the page. So 
Um, <laughs> even now it looks like a, an octopus that is uh, dribbling basketballs. I think that's where we're at <laughs> in terms of visualization. Cracking myself up. So um, I think it's important to kind of get your head around what these things look like. They are going to look silly because of the limitations of my art skills, but this helps to at least get your head around what's going on when these things are actually sharing electrons. Because oftentimes in chemistry, we use this kind of ball and stick model where we put things together and it looks like it's just a bunch of balls and sticks and this is a bond and this is an atom. And that's just not quite the way that things work. So we need to have multiple understandings and visualizations in order to, um, to really best accurately reflect what we understand about bonding. So, what I really wanted to talk about in this video is what this looks like in double and triple bonds. So we just focused on single bonds in my ammonia, but I want to look at compounds that now have double and triple bonds. Now this gets into some lingo that I mentioned in an, another video on sigma and pi bonds, and a sigma bond is in alignment with the axis. So the sigma bond follows the axis of the bond, And all single bonds are sigma bonds. So you have to have a sigma bond, a bond that's in line with the bond axis, in order to have a bond in the first place. So a covalent bond is a sigma bond. But if you have more than one, one bond, if you have more than a single bond, then you end up with some pi bonds. And the reason for that can be explained with hybridization. So a pi bond is something that is in or out of the axis. It's parallel to the bond axis. So I usually think of it as above and below the bond axis, or I think of it as like in and out of. So in and out of, or kind of above and below the bond axis, because we're talking about overlapping p orbitals, because sigma in Greek is s, and pi in Greek is p. And so we're talking about s and p orbitals and combinations of them when we're talking about hybrids. And so I want to talk about how this all kind of fits together in a structure. So let's consider the double bonds first, and then we'll speak to the triple bonds as well. Let's take the compound ethylene. Ethylene is an organic compound with two carbons. That's where the prefix eth comes from. The ene ending tells me that there's a double bond between them. And when I put together this structure, so this isn't the Lewis dot structure. I mean, it is the Lewis dot structure, but I've also showed the three-dimensionality of it, right? Because um, I'm showing that the, each of these carbons is trigonal planar, right? It has that trigonal planar geometry. I have kind of two Mercedes-Benz symbols that are stuck together. So if I have trigonal pyramid ge or sorry, trigonal planar geometry with those 120 degree angles, trigonal plane, that comes from three electron pairs around a central atom. So if we're thinking about this in terms of hybrid orbitals, that means that I have three hybrids. And if I have three hybrids, then that means that it's coming from three orbitals that I have put together. So that means that I have three sp2 hybrids. So that S and two Ps give me the three orbitals that I've hybridized together, and the three of them around the central atom are going to create that trigonal planar geometry. Um, when I look at that hybrid, then I say, well, I've used two of the Ps and an S, and I've kind of smashed them all together, and they end up with this small lobe, big lobe thing. But what, what happened to the other P? There's still another P orbital. Well, I have one unhybridized un unbridized un hybridized that's why i try to write in advance so i don't have to think and write at the same time so i have uh unhybridized p orbital and just one of them in this case one unhybridized p orbital and we'll talk about what that looks like then so if we're visualizing this in three dimensions because so the name of the game is geometry for all of this stuff then if i have a carbon here i'm going to just take this guy and i'm going to put its hybrids on it so i have um, sp2 hybrids so i'm going to have here's kind of my nucleus in the small lobe and i have my sp2 coming out this way 
my geometry is trigonal plane trigonal planar so i'm going to try to do it here with my 120 degree angles to the best of my artistic abilities and then i have another carbon next to it that has the same sort of operation going on so i have sp2 here sp2 here sp2 here Okay, <laughs> uh, obviously not the same scale. That's fine. We're doing we're doing the thing. Now this bond here, this overlap here between these sp2s, is a sigma bond. It's in line with the bond axis because the bond axis here goes through the middle of the molecule. That's the bond between these two carbons. So along that bond axis is my sigma bond. I also have sigma bonds with my hydrogens because recall my hydrogens have an s. So here's the one s. This is in line with this bond axis, right? So this is a sigma S in line with this bond axis. So this is a sigma S, S. Okay, so I have, here's a sigma, here's a sigma, there's a sigma. So there's five sigma bonds in this structure. And if you count up the bonds, that sounds pretty good. Now, the only thing that I don't have is that second bond between the carbons. I need two places of overlap. I have one place of overlap in the bond axis, but I, I also have unhybridized p orbitals. So if I visualize my p orbitals kind of coming off of these, what? these carbons, I'm going to draw them as kind of poorly drawn PYs. And they aren't going to be this much bigger, but I'm just trying to differentiate them from the hybrids. These are coming kind of above, above and below the planes. If we have these two planar molecules that are together, then you'd have something that's kind of above and below the plane. So if we have lobes that are coming above and below, and there's some overlap between those lobes, then that's the pi bond. And these are just the p orbitals. Now, even though I'd have overlapping from both of the orbitals here, or both of the lobes of the orbitals, um, it's still only one pi bond because it's still only one orbital that is overlapping with another single orbital. So that's kind of confusing for students. But this is what a double bond looks like. It's a sigma and a pi, and that comes from overlapping hybrids and overlapping p orbitals.